Hello. <laughs> this it, is Bill Fairman. By, by the way, <laughs> as you can tell, it's early in the morning for me, and mm. it takes me a while to get going, even though it's after nine o'clock. It's still early in the he morning. He has those me. issues till about three. So let's in start again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Fairman with Carolina Capital Management. My lovely sister Wendy Sweet. She's also my partner. This partner. Thanks for the lovely thing. That was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here with with our friend Dennis Hampton. Uh, he is a, a builder slash developer that we do business with, and he's doing these remarkably beautiful Charleston style houses in the city of Rock Hill. And for those of you who are not familiar with Rock Hill, South Carolina, it's a bedroom community of Charlotte. It's a beautiful community. We love it. Our office is based here. And it's being redeveloped all around the downtown area, making it nice and walkable. The city has done a marvelous job promoting the development of the downtown area. These homes are within walking distance of this beautiful park called Fountain Park. And you're going to see pictures of Fountain Park and the house uh, throughout this interview. Right, well. right. We'll poke it in. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> well, let's get started, Dennis. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. By the way, share, like, subscribe. <laughs> and all those good things. Check us out on Snapchat. That's right. <laughs> that's, what always, that's what I always say. Dennis, how did you get started in this business in the first place? Well, I have a, a trades back background. Um, started off actually getting an associate's degree in mechanical HVAC and Going, going through uh, uh, trade programs, mm -hmm. apprenticeships for plumbing, pipe fitting, HVAC. I've worked for 10 years doing commercial industrial HVAC service work. And, and on the side, I would always build my own homes. And so uh, over time, I just continued that, that process of construction and building. And, and, and it led into me uh, starting my own business as a general contractor. Wow. Knowing all that kind of makes your trades a little nervous, I'm sure, because now you really know what to you really know what to check and how to stay on top of right. them. That's awesome. By the way, just to add on to this, I know most most young people are getting pushed to go to four-year colleges because you're not worth a darn unless you've gone to a four-year school. And come out with a $200,000 debt. I remember <laughs> during the crash, you couldn't even apply for a job as a receptionist unless you had a four-year degree. That's right. Right? The point that I'm trying to make is if you have any business acumen at all and you go to any kind of a trade school and learn a trade, num number one, you can always make money at that trade. But if you have business acumen as well, it won't be very long before you own the company or your own company. Right. So keep right. that in mind. Right. Hence City View Builders. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. Awesome. So when did you get your GC license? In 2004. Okay. Right awesome. when. Right when we were thinking everything was going to go smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> and it That's did for a few right. years, right? That's right, yeah. Well, uh, you know, the markets are secular. Typically, and Wendy and I have been in the mortgage business for, I'm not going to say how many years, because then it really puts an, an age on us. Yeah. But 20 to 30. Markets are always going to change, but it's typically interest rate based. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that last crash had nothing to do with interest rates. It just ran out of money. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. So what is it that got you into constructing houses? What was your big why? What is it that you were trying to accomplish? Well, I enjoyed building homes. Awesome. So it, it, as far as that, that was fairly simple and straightforward. Um, I enjoy the trades. I enjoy construction. I had an opportunity starting around 2004 to start uh, doing uh, uh, significant rehabs and additions and developments around downtown Charlotte. Mm. And around the uh, downtown uptown area of Charlotte at the time, it was it was not what we know it to be today. Right. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> yeah. And so as we started to purchase homes and, and, and renovate them and sell them, it actually led to more individuals offering properties to us at the mm. time. Nice. And so we, we, our business grew from there. We were able to acquire, rehab, resale, and develop. As you all mentioned, the market, you know, changed, but we had a fairly strong market through the end of 2008 in hmm. the Charlotte region. Awesome. And so what did you do during that time period when, you know, like 2008 till about, what, 10 or 11? What did you do? How did you survive? It was very, very difficult. Um, 
2009, actually, I had uh, the opportunity and privilege to uh, work as a Charlotte fireman. Oh, awesome. And Thank so, you. And so I, I, I was able to do that. The schedule was such where you, you work 10, 24 hour shifts. So we maintained and rebuilt our business. Obviously, uh, workload had changed just because there was little to no construction activity right, for right. a couple years. Right. Yeah, that's a awesome. lot of people completely got out of that industry, and that's why we have mm-hmm. shortages of, of labor now. Correct. Because yeah. of the, you know, they just said, hey, what's really funny is as soon as the crash happened, I finally started seeing trade schools advertising for Correct. construction yeah. uh, education. I'm going a little late on that boat, aren't <laughs> <Yeah>. you? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. 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 That's for sure. So, so you do rehabs and new construction. Which do you like better? New construction is easier. Yeah. But I, I enjoy rehabs, especially old, beautiful, historic homes that, mm-hmm. that you can actually uh, bring back to life. So they, they each have their own reward, I'll put it that way. Right. Now, when you're building a home, are you doing custom homes or are you... Uh, Spec homes. What's your what's your main gig on that? Well, what we do probably falls in the category of semi custom. It's not in, in the category of track homes, um, but nor is it really high end custom homes. That that's a different market itself. For our price point, we've we've developed homes anywhere from two hundred that have sold as high as six hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. So so we're we're about at that price point. And then you say semi custom. That means you kind of build it, and they come as you're building it, and Correct. and pick little things out. I would assume that's the hardest thing to do. <laughs> yes, everyone thinks they know what they want until they have to make that decision. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And it's door number one or two uh, or three. Oh no! That, I don't know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I changed my mind. Mm-hmm. That's that's right. And then. And then, two, you know, they'll say, hey, I want this wall this way. And then, you know, they can back out at any time. Mm -hmm. And then you've created something, some kind of niche for Mm -hmm. them that's different. Correct. And now, now you've got to go to sell that to somebody else. Boy, is that tough. Correct. How do you handle that? Well, you do your best uh, you can in reference to when a client makes significant changes, then you have to have them put a deposit down to help secure those investments. I mean, standard selections are, are different, obviously, but the, but they they typically we try to steer our clients in a way where they make decisions that still allow them to have some personal touches while also balancing what everyone wants. And that's something that's going to fit their budget. Right, right. And you've brought budget and financing up a couple of times. So what are some of the ways that you're financing the the deals that you're doing how, how do you go about that I, you, you know you've used us for for a deal or two and we're thrilled thank you mm-hmm. um, but what is it that, what what's your preference what are the things that you're you're doing to get things financed so over the years I've had a chance to use a lot of different finance and I've used just conventional bank financing where it's a commercial loan from a, a lender that is a typical 12 month interest only construction loan mm-hmm. are they easy I wouldn't say easy is the right term. <laughs> they, they all come with a, a level of application, paperwork. It's a process to get them closed. Lots of red tape. It is. It is. And over the years, I've seen all that change. So I work pre-2009, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, pre-recession and after uh, the, yeah. the recession. So, yeah. so it's a different environment today, which can add another layer of complication. To right, it. right. And what are some of the other ways that you're doing? Uh, the other ways is partnerships uh, with investors. And tell me how that works. Typically, an investor will come in and partner with me, and they will fund a project that we have with either a certain percentage on the money that they lend us or splitting the profits at the end. It, it depends on the relationship that we develop. Now, are they having a say in what you build and how you build it? Typically, they don't want to have really any part in right. that. Right, hopefully not, right? <laughs> yeah, as, as long as it's profitable yeah. <laughs> and, and meet certain timelines, they're, they're, they're usually happy. Now, with that also can come as a builder slash developer, you may lose more of your, your profits. Right, you know, right. Than, than but they, that's just like paying interest, it right? Is. Yep. You're, you're just paying it in a different way. Correct. That's awesome. Yep. So, so, so each has its advantages, disadvantages. 
Um, one thing in particular I've enjoyed working with with your company is that uh, the process has been relatively smooth and seamless awesome. and timely. Awesome. Timely like is to hear important. That. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So have you done any builds for people that on their land and they've, mm -hmm. they've gotten the, the, the financing themselves yeah. and you're yeah. just uh, contracted as the, the builder? I, I do. And that's why in a lot of ways working with your company is so important to our company. A lot of homeowners today, they may easily qualify for the purchase of a home. Uh, they may even have gone as far as uh, maybe securing a lot. But a lot of buyers today are not in a position to secure a construction loan. The bank's standards have changed over right. the years where now, regardless of how much equity is in it, they're looking for 10% down. Right. So on a $300,000 bill, even though they may have already purchased their land, they right. may still have to come out of pocket wow. with additional funds. That, that's wow. interesting. I, I know when we had our house built back, you know, at the turn of the century, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I did the same thing. I already owned the lot, mm -hmm. and I signed the lot over to the builder. Mm -hmm. He got the construction loan, and Correct. then I ended up with a purchase loan at the, at the end and used the, the lot as the, the down payment, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to put any cash out. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that leads me to my next question. You you always start off as really good friends at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you end as friends when the house is finished? <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's a very stressful pro yeah. process. Yeah. And that's why for, for builders, builders are really nervous about taking additional risks after any builder that went through 2008 2009 right. sure they're they're nervous about taking that risk because a typical construction loan is just that it's just temporary financing six right. to 12 months interest only which means that the builder if the project isn't sold has to find a way a path to um, to refinancing or attaching permanent financing to it right and so because of that you know builders are nervous they, they're they somewhat hesitant because of that, even though it's a very strong market. Well, markets can change at any time. Yeah. You say you, you go up to 600000 I know there's uh, has been some flatness in the above 500 market mm -hmm. uh, in Charlotte, but, you know, 300 or under, um, they're lining up for them. Yeah. That's right. And that's liable to change at, at some point. But mm -hmm. The thing about working with investors, partnerships, mm -hmm. uh, private money, those types of relationships are going to work with you as the market cycles change in the middle of a build Correct. versus your more mm -hmm. traditional uh, bank financing because they don't really have the bandwidth to do anything different other than just take it back. Correct. Correct. So that that's why I, in our own stuff, we always push towards, you know, even if it's a private mm -hmm. lender, the, the thing is, a private lender is going to be less expensive, but they don't have infinitely deep pockets, so it's hard to scale. That's right. If that's all you're using as well. That's right. So. You know, before the we started rolling the cameras, we talked a little bit about the market and um, the Charleston-style houses that you're building in Rock Hill and mm -hmm. how the, the buyers kind of surprised you. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the buyers that are lining up, we anticipated that it would be a lot of um, millennials, young professionals, couples, maybe ones considering having a family or just starting a family, who um, are now tired of paying maybe fifteen hundred a month to rent an apartment. Right. Who, who want to transition over to ownership, where they can do it at the same same relative cost. And while we do have interest at that, that from that category, yeah. the interest that's been surprising is how many are 50 and older and are really looking at our homes as somewhat downsized. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and their complaint about the master. So there's plant masters yeah. down in some plans, but in a, right. the other plans, they're right. upstairs. Yeah. and. Not everyone likes stairs. That's right. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't like right. stairs. But the fact that you can put an elevator in for ten to fifteen thousand, right. you know, you think it's oh, going to cost so much, but yeah. um, yeah. that's a great option. Well, well, I was going to mention. Now that I've thought about it, it's probably not as surprising mm -hmm. as you would think about the downsizing. Because let's face it, it's not 
cost effective for most track builders mm -hmm. to build affordable homes. It's not. There, there's not a lot of margin, right. and it just takes one little right. mistake. And you said they're already nervous. Think about uh, doing a, a whole subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot at risk uh, yes. when you're doing that, and if the market shifts, then you're kind of stuck. And if you don't have any margin to work with, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's even tougher. So I, I'm assuming that the 50-somethings are having a hard time finding new builds mm -hmm. that are going to be at that price point. Mm -hmm. it is, it's very difficult to, for it. In my opinion, any builder, track home or semi-custom, to actually be profitable building anything less than two fifty, it, yeah, it, it's very difficult. Yeah. So you have to be more of a, you have to have a fix and flip investor mentality when you're going out searching for the lots Correct. that you're going to build on. Correct. And have to get them at the right price in order to yep. help maximize your uh, margins on those. And then location means everything. A location, and just as important as that is time. Right. So if, if I do find something that works and I, I need to secure financing with it, I need to be able to approach a partner quickly and say, we have XYZ time. Let's see if we can move forward with this. Right, right. Once again, you're not getting that with your large uh, financial institutions. They move at the speed of snail yeah yeah <laughs> right. it, it's difficult now you get great rates with them yeah and if you end up refinancing along the way if that's possible because most of them don't like refinancing something in the middle of a build in the first place but uh, yeah that, most most people go towards the the partnerships or the, the private money mm -hmm. really based on speed mm -hmm. and being able to take care take the down right. the deal when you can because yeah. all of us across the country are suffering from an inventory shortage. Yeah, and for builders, we've been doing a loan to at least let you do the takedown to get a hold of that lot or a hold of that house that you're going to knock right. down and hold on to it until you get your permitting and zoning and all of that stuff in order, and then we'll modify the loan to include the the build cost too to to try and save you some money right. from having to throw it all out at the the yeah. beginning. So we do what we can to to work with you. So. Are you considering doing any multifamily stuff? Maybe condos or? I'd like to. Um, I've had, as we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. about the 50 and older, and they're interested in flats. Right. So. Um, yeah, no need for an elevator. Yeah. So, so then, yeah. <laughs> and they're great shoes. Correct, correct. And so, and so the, the key to doing it is being able to, again, find land. Right. Yeah, that that works for you to do that right. that level of development. Right. And I think, and uh, most people know this already, but I'll just reiterate it. It's a lot easier to find the affordable land in the bedroom communities right. around the major cities mm -hmm. than it is to find them in the in the major cities. It's funny when we had our home built, everybody was moving out to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. Then of course, as soon as we get comfortable, everybody's <laughs> moving back to the. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us again. Really had an awesome time. I know Wendy did as well. Woohoo! So if you like what you heard and you want to see more, what do we do? You can hit one of these. I feel like the hippy dippy weather girl because we've got a green screen going on. So we could have a cold front moving in from Virginia or, right? <laughs> oh, come on. That's funny. I don't care who you are. So you can pick any of these other shows. We have some here. We have some here. We have some here. Just pick one. Test it out. Right? Yeah. Also, subscribe, like, and our website is easy. www. <laughs> That's a lot of W's. <laughs> CarolinaHardMoney.com. Tell all your friends.